Right. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so thank you everybody who's still here and in particular, uh, thank you to the, to the four speakers uh, who are still here. So it's the, the final afternoon of the workshop and I'll be the chair for the afternoon. And we did pick, so, so everybody hopefully draws uh, a crowd uh, at these, at these workshops, at this workshop in, in terms of what they do. But we did pick four speakers who we are hoping are uh, drawing particular crowds also this afternoon uh, because of what they do. So there, there's a variety of uh, excellent uh, sounding talks uh, coming up from, uh, from, from very good speakers and we look forward to them. And so the first speaker, as you can see, is Victor Yu of Oregon, who's going to talk about GPU acceleration of the West Coast for large scale frequency GW calculations. Can you hear me? Hello? Okay, good. Thank you for the introduction, Volker, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, share our work here. Uh, thank you everybody for coming to my talk. So uh, I will be talking about our recent work uh, running uh, large GW calculations on uh, many GPUs. And this work is done with uh, my supervisor at Aragon, Marco Gaboni. And as you can see, we both uh, come from the material science division. Uh, so why are we interested in HPC? And uh, the answer uh, is the following. So uh, in our group, we use uh, first principle simulations to study a lot of uh, interesting uh, topics. Some examples are materials for uh, energy conversion and also uh, for quantum information science uh, like uh, qubits. So uh, these applications require that uh, we must be able to accurately describe uh, the electronic structure of these materials. Uh, and in addition to ground state properties, uh, which can be predicted by standard DFT, we are also interested in uh, excited states for a very large and complex systems. So uh, the, some of the examples of the uh, structures we are considering, uh, including uh, nanoparticles uh, and solid liquid uh, interfaces, and also uh, spin defects in semiconductors. So uh, to study the excited states, we uh, rely on many body perturbation theory, and uh, we have developed a code called WEST, which is a uh, parallel uh, many body perturbation theory code based on plane waves and pseudopotentials. And what does WEST mean? Uh, it means actually uh, without empty states. Uh, this is uh, the number one feature of the code. So actually it has uh, GW and BSE and some other functionalities. Uh, all of them uh, are calculated without any explicit submission over uh, virtual orbitals. Uh, as many of you know, uh, conventional uh, GW approach uh, requires a uh, slowly converging uh, submission over empty orbitals. And this is avoided in West by uh, using a number of uh, novel algorithms. And uh, another uh, feature is that it does not require any storage or manipulation of large matrices. Uh, this is because the dielectric matrices in West are uh, represented in a compact uh, basis set, which uh, I will explain on the next page. Uh, and so uh, the, uh, the code is, written in Fortran uh, for the uh, 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 computational kernels, but it also has Python bindings for uh, handling the input and output uh, because uh, Python supports uh, the read and write XML and JSON files very easily. Uh, and uh, we do not re-implement uh, ground state DFT from scratch. Uh, instead, we uh, the, the code is interfaced to uh, quantum espresso and QBox for uh, uh, standard DFT calculations. So they are coupled either by directly calling uh, the API or uh, uh, they can also work in a client server, uh, in a client server mode. And uh, the code achieves 
uh, very good parallel efficiency uh, on CPU supercomputers. Uh, so the, the strong scaling is good uh, for up to over 500,000 uh, CPU cores. Uh, I will discuss how this is achieved uh, later. So some applications of the code, uh, including uh, uh, this material shown on the uh, previous page. So uh, some highlights include uh, structures with over 2,000 electrons and also uh, simulations of uh, snapshots extracted from MD simulations with uh, 500 electrons. Uh, so uh, this can already be done on uh, CPUs. So uh, how does the code work? Uh, it requires ground state DFT information uh, from, for example, the PW uh, code from Quantum Espresso. And then uh, the uh, DFT wave functions and energies are used as input to the WSTAT uh, code, which performs uh, the so-called PDAP algorithm, which is basically uh, constructing a busy set for the later GW calculation. And the busy set is obtained by an iterative uh, diagonalization of the dielectric matrix at uh, zero frequency. And then uh, once the uh, PDAP basis is constructed, uh, it is employed in the calculation of G and W, uh, which are performed using a, a Lanzos algorithm. And then the uh, frequency uh, integration is carried over using the contour deformation uh, approach. And finally, the quasi-particle energies are solved uh, perturbatively from the quantum energies. So uh, in, this talk, in this talk, I will not uh, derive the equations or the uh, formalism, uh, and I won't go into the details of the theory, but uh, I will focus on the parallelization aspect of West uh, to explain how the code is parallelized on CPUs and uh, what we did for uh, the migration to GPUs. So next, I will uh, use the PDAP generation uh, part as a example to explain uh, the parallel structure uh, of the code. So uh, this is a, a simplified uh, pseudocode of the uh, PDAP algorithm. So it's uh, a iterative uh, Davison diagonalization uh, ar ar arranged in uh, several loops. So the outermost loop is the uh, iterative eigensolver loop. And by design, it cannot be done in parallel. So it's uh, uh, sequential. Uh, but the other loops can be done in parallel. Uh, so uh, for example, in the perturbation loop, we give uh, NPDAP perturbations to the system and we compute the response. And the perturbations are all independent from each other. So uh, this loop uh, in uh, red can be uh, distributed across uh, what we call images, uh, which is compatible to uh, quantum espresso. Uh, and then for the innermost loop, which performs uh, Fourier transforms and uh, which solves uh, linear systems, we distribute the plane waves uh, to the MPI processes within each image. So uh, the uh, idea is uh, depicted here. So we split the global uh, communicator, uh, which basically means all the MPI processes into images. And each image handles a subset of the perturbations. And then within each image, uh, all the MPI processes do uh, parallel FFTs. And uh, on a traditional CPU supercomputer, what we typically do is we assign each compute node to be one image. And the CPU cores within one node uh, work on FFTs in parallel. So uh, this uh, has proven to be very successful. Uh, so shown here is one uh, benchmark on the uh, Mira supercomputer which is a uh, IBM Blue Gen Q uh, machine. And as you can see, the parallel efficiency of the code uh, is very close to uh, perfect for up to uh, 25, uh, I mean, three or 200,000 CPU cores. And it is still decent for more CPU cores. And uh, the trick is uh, what I just uh, explained. 
the perturbations are embarrassingly parallel, so they can be uh, distributed uniformly without any problem. And a similar observation uh, is on the uh, Theta uh, supercomputer, which has Intel next landing uh, CPUs. So now the question is, can we uh, get the same efficiency on GPUs? And we want to use uh, not only one GPU or 10 GPUs, but uh, on thousands of GPUs available on today's uh, top supercomputers. Uh, so before I uh, explain uh, our uh, work on the GPU, uh, uh, the details of the algorithm, uh, I will first uh, briefly uh, talk about the programming models used in the GPU version of West. So uh, West is written in Fortran. So uh, there are many available models available to us, uh, including uh, libraries, uh, directives, uh, CUDA kernels, and uh, standard language. So uh, currently, we are mostly using uh, CUDA libraries and also directives. So initially, we had many uh, kernels written in CUDA, but then we uh, also tested the performance uh, with directives, and we found that the performance is quite close to uh, CUDA kernels uh, within a few percent. And uh, using directives is more productive for us. It allows us to port uh, the entire GW code in West to NVIDIA GPUs in uh, just a few weeks, uh, not including all the optimization. So we decided to uh, convert all the kernels into uh, directives. And also we hope that it will be more uh, portable uh, going forward. So uh, the, the first uh, GPU offloading strategy we considered is uh, quite straightforward. So this is uh, uh, the, the, the situation for the CPU code, which I already explained. So what we tried first is we tried to offload the local computations on each MPI process to, uh, to, to the GPU, which leads to a picture like this. So uh, the problem is that uh, we want to use many GPUs for parallel FFTs. And uh, this is actually a very bad idea, uh, as you may have uh, suspected. So the problem is that uh, FFTs cannot be done efficiently uh, on many GPUs. So here we, we are testing the performance of uh, parallel FFTs on the Summit uh, supercomputer. So we tested both uh, CPU backend and GPU backend uh, on one, uh, I mean, on a subset of a node uh, up to four nodes. And the CPU uh, FFT routine scales uh, very nicely, which is why the CPU version of West uh, is working very well. Uh, in contrast, the uh, GPU version of FFT works faster on one GPU than on uh, more GPUs. For example, here, if I use four nodes, which means uh, 24 GPUs, then the performance is uh, also worse than just using one GPU. So, Part of the reason is that for uh, our application, the grid size uh, of the FFT is relatively small, uh, but we also tested larger grid like 256 cubed and uh, we see a similar picture. So uh, this is of course because of the communication overhead between GPUs, uh, like uh, as shown on this uh, node architecture of uh, Summit. So as we can see the uh, GPUs on the same socket, uh, they are connected by uh, NVLink uh, version 2, which is uh, 50 GB per second. Uh, it sounds fast, but it's much slower than the uh, bandwidth of the high bandwidth memory uh, available to each GPU. And uh, what's even slower is the internode connection. Uh, this explains why uh, the computation on a single GPU is always much faster than uh, the communication between GPUs. So uh, we tried some uh, strategies to speed up the uh, parallel FFTs on more than one GPU. 
for example, we try to use CUDA aware MPI, uh, which means that uh, the communication between GPUs uh, does not have to go through the host CPU. So this gives us a, a factor of two, uh, roughly. And we also tried uh, to do the uh, FFTs in single precision, uh, which leads to another uh, two-fold speed up. Uh, but in any case, the key message uh, of this page is that FFTs on one GPU is always more efficient than uh, using more GPUs. Uh, so therefore, uh, we conclude that uh, for our code at least, FFTs should be done on the least number of GPUs, ideally only one GPU. Uh, but the challenge is that uh, the code actually distribute the uh, FFTs at the, uh, one of the two main parallelization levels. So uh, we have to change the uh, parallelization shown here because of the low efficiency of uh, multi-GPU FFTs. So uh, what we do is we are exploring more uh, parallelism in our algorithm. So the algorithm is quite nice because actually not only the perturbations are independent from each other, actually uh, all the inner loops are independent. So for example, the uh, orbitals from different spin channels uh, or uh, each quantum orbital itself uh, can be processed fully in parallel. So uh, what we did is we actually added two more layers of uh, parallelization to our picture. Uh, so which leads to a more complicated graph like this. So now uh, suppose we still uh, have 16 GPUs. Now, uh, instead of uh, using eight GPUs for uh, parallel FFTs, we uh, divide each image into two uh, spin channels and each spin channel uh, is split into two band groups. And uh, now each band group only has two MPI processes. And now the FFTs are not carried out using eight GPUs, uh, but only two. Uh, so this uh, flexible strategy allows us to uh, take, take advantage of all the uh, parallelism available in the algorithm and also to make more uh, efficient use of the GPUs by uh, restricting the FFTs to fewer GPUs. So this is only an example. And if uh, the memory is enough, we uh, typically use only one GPU for the FFT. Uh, so this uh, strategy also helps us to avoid uh, global MPI communication. So for example, when the uh, results from different fan groups uh, need to be uh, collected, instead of a global MPI communication, we, we can only let uh, each band group talk with each other. Uh, therefore, we reduce the uh, communication volume as well. Uh, so, uh, but sometimes the uh, MPI communication cost is uh, still relatively high, especially if compared to uh, the very fast computations on the GPU. So uh, what we do to further uh, reduce the MPI com communication cost is uh, the standard approach of overlapping communications with uh, other operations in the code. So uh, we are trying to, uh, we tried to overlap uh, MPI communications and CPU GPU communications, uh, which are not many by the way in the code uh, and also GPU computations. So uh, I'll use this example to explain our strategy. So it's a, a multiplication of two distributed matrices. So this pattern shows up uh, in the uh, algorithm to compute G and W. Uh, so mathematically it's uh, just a jam operation where we uh, multiply two matrices. Uh, but uh, here, all the A and B and C matrices are distributed uh, as in indicated by the colors here. So uh, our naive version, uh, GPU version, simply copies uh, the uh, matrix A from CPU to, uh, from host to device. And we do the uh, local matrix multiplication on the GPU and then uh, we use MPI to communicate uh, A uh, from its neighbor to get the next portion of A to be multiplied with B. Uh, 
so you may ask why we decided to keep a CPU copy of A uh, denoted by A underscore H here, uh, which seems redundant. So the, uh, the reason is that uh, we want to overlap this MPI communication, the, uh, uh, the exchange of matrix A with the computation uh, on the GPU. So uh, by keeping two copies of A, we can let the GPU to uh, use the device copy for the matrix multiplication. And at the same time, the CPU can already uh, start MPI exchange to get the next uh, batch of A. Uh, so as you can see from the timeline uh, on the right, so this uh, leads to some overlap between the GPU activities and the uh, MPI communication. and. Uh, which of course saves uh, some time. And uh, we further explored uh, uh, if we can speed it up uh, using single precision. So we, uh, here we are creating a, a single precision copy uh, of the matrix A, uh, which is underscore SP. And uh, we communicate matrix A in single precision uh, and we do the matrix multiply in double precision. So the, uh, uh, the conversion of the precision and the computation of the GPU can all be uh, overlapped with uh, 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 MPI communication. And because MPI communication is more expensive than the computation, uh, in this case, we can uh, save some uh, more time. And uh, actually, when we uh, tried this, we didn't know if this has any impact on the, uh, uh, on the results of of the code. But in the end, we found that actually this is very, very good, which I'll show later. And uh, the local matrix multiply here uh, is done by calling uh, kublas, of course, and uh, have one slide for uh, kublas. So as we know, uh, the performance of kublas, uh, or uh, in this case, DGAM, depends on the matrix uh, sizes M, N, and K, which are parameters to uh, DGEM. So this plot shows that uh, the performance of Kublas DGEM uh, depends a lot on the matrix size. So uh, here I'm keeping M and K uh, constant uh, while I uh, test different value of N. Uh, N is one of the dimensions of the matrix. So uh, in the left part, uh, N is uh, rather small, uh, meaning that the matrix multiplication is more like a, a dot product or uh, a tall and skinny matrix multiplication. So this kind of operation is uh, memory bound. And so it cannot reach the uh, peak of, uh, so this is done on a A100 GPU. So uh, here it cannot reach the peak performance of the hardware. Uh, which is about 20 T flops uh, if we consider the double precision tensor cores. Uh, so uh, if we uh, instead, if we enter the compute boundary regime, then we, we are much closer to the uh, 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 peak performance. And thanks to our uh, flexible uh, parallelization scheme, uh, we are able to freely tune the size of our uh, uh, local matrix size to make sure that we are in this regime, not here, uh, and to stay close to the peak performance of the uh, GPU card. So uh, next, I want to briefly talk about eigenvalue solvers, which uh, we already discussed in, in, in the previous uh, panel session. So uh, as I said, we are using a Davison algorithm to uh, iteratively diagonalize uh, a matrix. So in each iteration of the uh, Davison algorithm, we need to diagonalize a dense matrix. So uh, this step is a small a fraction of the total time in the CPU version of VAST because the size of the matrix is uh, quite small. But uh, when, when we are using GPUs, we can solve much bigger problems and uh, correspondingly the size of the uh, the, the eigenvalue problem also becomes very big. So uh, we have different solvers. And of course, we want to use a GPU solver. So Q solver turns out to be very efficient on one GPU because it does not uh, have the MPI overhead and it 
does not have any copy uh, between CPUs and GPUs. Uh, but the problem is, uh, so the, the GPU memory is limited. To, so at some point, we run out of memory uh, with QSolver. So there is a single node version of QSolver, but uh, still it's uh, restricted to one node, not uh, cross node. So Alpa, on the other hand, uh, can use uh, GPUs on more than one node. So uh, by distributing the, the memory, the uh, memory requirement per node or per GPU is much lower. And uh, therefore, it can solve much bigger problems. Uh, so actually, we support all these option, options in, uh, in the West code. And uh, the code decides at runtime uh, which solver to use based on the size of the uh, of the simulation. Uh, so uh, in the last part of the talk, I'm going to show you some performance of the code. So I will first talk about the systems I showed on my first slide. So these systems have about uh, 1,000 electrons. Uh, so uh, I have a, a spin defect system, a nanoparticle, and a, a solid liquid interface. So these systems can already be uh, done using only CPUs. But uh, let's see if uh, if they can be uh, can be running faster on GPUs. And the answer is yes, of course. So uh, on this plot, uh, I'm comparing the performance of West running on 16 summit nodes uh, in comparison to uh, 256 Theta King L nodes. So the theoretical uh, performance, peak performance of 16 summit nodes and a 256 King L nodes are similar to each other, uh, both close to uh, 700 T flops. Uh, but uh, as you can see here, uh, this plot shows the speed up uh, of summit over uh, King L. So we are getting a 2x uh, speed up, uh, which means that the code running on GPUs uh, becomes more efficient than CPUs because of uh, two factors, at least. So first, uh, because each GPU node is, is much more powerful, uh, we can use fewer nodes, which means uh, less internode communication overhead. And also GPUs uh, has very high memory bandwidth which should be uh, beneficial to the uh, FFTs and uh, the other stuff in the code. So then uh, I'm showing you the benefit of using a mixed precision, which gives us a uh, additional speed up up to 45%. So uh, here uh, I'm doing uh, Fourier transforms and uh, some MPI communications in single precision, uh, which gives me a speed up, but the error uh, averaged over uh, these three systems and many other smaller uh, test cases is way below 10 to minus 4 EV in the converged quasi-particle energies, uh, which is very good. Uh, and then uh, move on to uh, the uh, scalability of the code. So uh, this is the same uh, cadmium uh, selenide nanoparticle shown on the previous page. So on a number of machines, including CPU machines and GPU mas machines, West scales very well, close to uh, ideal strong scaling. Uh, so the message is here is that uh, comparing Summit with uh, uh, Corey Haswell uh, partition, we see a 30x speed up uh, considering the same number of nodes. Uh, and uh, Sorry. Yeah, so what's also encouraging is that the same code without any modifications works two times faster on Theta GPU, which has the uh, newer generation A100 GPUs. Uh, so it has more memory and uh, also double precision tensor cores. And these features are uh, turned on automatically uh, without uh, any code modification. And then, uh, one Theta GPU node can solve the same problem in the same time that is solved by two Cori GPU nodes, uh, which has uh, V100 GPUs and three Summit nodes, uh, which have fewer GPUs and more than 100 traditional CPU nodes. Uh, now, uh, still strong scaling, but on a bigger system on Summit, 
uh, we can see that the code scales very well for large system of uh, over a thousand uh, uh, atoms. And uh, actually we can use basically the entire uh, summit machine to solve a 1700 silicon supercell uh, in half an hour using this number of GPUs. So my last slide is about some systems that cannot be easily solved by the uh, CPU version of West. So again, these systems align with our uh, scientific interest for energy applications and uh, quantum information science. So here I have an even bigger nanoparticle and bigger interfaces and also bigger uh, defect. So uh, the biggest one has over 10,000 uh, electrons and also a spin polarized system with uh, 6,300 uh, electrons. So we are not only uh, able to compute the VBM, CBM, or a few uh, frontier orbitals, actually we are able to compute thousands of quartz particle energies to plot the uh, local stars, which would help us to understand how the uh, uh, electronic structure or the defect levels uh, change along the interface or uh, within the defect material. So uh, in summary, the uh, West code, the GW part has been ported to NVIDIA GPUs and the code uh, is quite efficient, uh, both in terms of uh, performance and also parallel scalability. And uh, uh, we, we are able to use uh, 25,000 NVIDIA GPUs to solve very large uh, problems with 10,000 uh, electrons. And uh, Moving into the next year, uh, we hope the uh, X-scale supercomputers in the US will become available to us. And we are working on a plan to make the code uh, more portable to uh, run on these bigger supercomputers. And we are planning to uh, move other functionalities in West to GPUs. Uh, yeah, uh, that's actually all I have. Uh, these are the people and uh, centers who helped us uh, in the development. And this work is funded by the MICOM uh, Center, funded by DOE. Uh, thank you for listening. I hope we still have some time for questions. Thank you. Yes, I think hopefully we can take uh, one or two short questions if they arise. Does anyone have questions? Uh, okay, I have one. How much percentage of your cost is on the FFT and how much percentage is your cost on the edge per si calling quantum espresso in your uh, GPU version? Yeah, I asked this question several times and uh, also Marco asked me several times, but it really depends on the system. Uh, so there is no uh, global answer. So for example, for this system uh, where the number of plane waves is huge, then about half of the flops coming from FFTs, uh, but uh, for other systems, maybe only 10%, so it depends. All right, more questions? Uh, I, yeah, have I have a question. Oh, go ahead, Will, go ahead, William. Uh, mm -hmm. thanks, thanks for the talk, Victor. Um, I would, you said you were using directives-based programming to, to run on the GPU. And yeah. I was wondering how easy is it to do the overlapping of communication and computation with a directives-based approach? I mean, uh, the directives has uh, have a async uh, keyword. You put that, then uh, the, uh, the loop becomes async. And also, uh, we also use async MPI functions. So it's very easy, very straightforward. Thanks. Sure. All right. I, I did have the short question about the uh, cutoff energies that you showed. So compared to some GW calculations, the, the basis set cutoff, the cut that you showed is, is relatively low. Is that true or is that just, uh, is that converged in these cases? Well, I mean, it's not yeah, converged. Yeah. yeah, it's not converged to, I mean, the, the limit but it's converged below 0.1 EV. So, uh, I mean, we could do a larger uh, cutoff, but here we stopped here. I see. Mm -hmm. 
but also uh, these are not toy calculations with very low cutoff. What's the pseudo? Uh, ONCV, non conserving. All right. Yeah, thank you very much again. Uh, Victor, let's continue to uh, Alfredo. I think uh, he is next. Uh, and um, yes, if you can share, then that will. Uh, let's see if that works. It should work. Ah, you see it? Is it? I'm seeing it. Right. And we can see a number of slides now. So we need to yeah, present a slideshow. Great. Can you see it well? Yeah, and you're relatively quiet compared to Victor a few seconds ago. Is that? The microphone is. I see. Can you hear me better now? Is it better? Still? Yeah, this is better. It's okay. Hello, hello. Mm -hmm. I see. Can, can you hear me at all? Yes. No, I cannot hear anyone. Ah, sorry. Um, so you, you need to check the, the settings in your Zoom. Sometimes it doesn't pick the right audio. It's not selecting that. You just have to go to the Zoom audio, preferences audio, and then select the one that you're actually using. All right. Alfredo, can you hear us again? Ah, sorry about that. Ah, okay, we'll see. Thanks to everybody who's still here in the meantime. Yeah, so we can have a short break. It's very quiet. Does anybody have comments on the previous talk still? Yeah, actually, maybe I can ask another question to Victor. So when you did this bank group things, I was expecting that you actually also gain on CPU on KNL because you are kind of forming smaller groups of processors to deal with the- Yes, with yes, the we do. Portion. So does, your, does all your uh, report Performance figures include the band group tuning for all the CPU results? Yes, yes, we use the okay. same, a new version of uh, 